the dynamics of pendulum motion using the language of uh, rotational motion okay we have studied a simple pendulum in um, in the unit newton's laws of motion using newton's second law now we will again uh, look at the same problem um, starting with simple pendulum uh, we will look at the same problem using the language of uh, rotational motion because anyway simple pendulum in the case of simple pendulum uh, the ball uh, tra travels along the arc of a circle right uh, with the pivot at as, as the center of the circle so it is uh, very apt to use the language of rotational motion to analyze this problem so we will first look at uh, the case of simple pendulum so this is our first case so in a, in a simple pendulum uh, okay <coughs> this is the vertical okay and this is the bow we are treating the bow as a point particle and it is tracing a an arc like this <clears throat> let us say length of the uh, the pendulum is l and at this instant it makes an angle let us say phi with the vertical okay okay now uh, let us try to analyze this um, so here the weight of the bob is acting vertically downward and uh, tension of, of the string on the bob will be along the string towards the pivot point let us see how we can uh, look at this problem from the language of uh, rotational motion so first we need to um, calculate the torque of this uh, bow about the uh, axis of rotation so the axis of rotation is a perpendicular axis passing through the pivot point uh, so this is our origin o pivot point o is the origin so we are going to calculate the torque acting on the bow about the origin o okay uh, so it's clear that uh, the torque due to the tension will be zero okay because r cross t will be uh, zero um, t is acting along the direction of r so the angle between r and t will be 180 degree so that there is no contribution to torque from the tension so the only contribution to torque is from um the weight of the bob okay so let us see what is this torque um <clears throat> so let me redraw this figure here uh, this is the pivot point okay this angle is phi so the direction of this is the direction uh, this is the the radial distance from the pivot point to the mass and uh, the direction of this radial vector is this okay so the direction of torque is uh, okay r the direction of r cross mg right so this is uh, the rotation sense of rotation is uh, clockwise Okay, so if we use right hand rule the torque is perpendicular and inward okay it will be in the minus z direction or perpendicular and inward so what is the magnitude of the torque torque is equal to so since it is inward we can put a minus sign so what is the magnitude perpendicular distance uh, into force force into perpendicular distance force is uh, this um, weight of the bow which is this w is mg what is the perpendicular distance to the line of force uh, so this is the line of force and the perpendicular distance from the pivot is this okay since the length of the pendulum is l um, okay and uh, this angle is phi it's clear that uh, this will be l sin phi okay we can make a right angle triangle here so 
this uh, this side will be l cos phi and uh, this horizontal side will be l sin phi okay <clears throat> so the perpendicular distance is l sin phi Now, when the angle phi is very small, okay, only um, small ang angle oscillations are simple harmonic oscillations. So, for small angle oscillations, we can approximate this as minus W L phi because sin phi is approximately equal to phi for small angles. So, this is the torque, okay. Now, this torque we can write as I into alpha, right? This is also a fixed axis rotation. In other words, this is a pure rotation. Axis is stationary. Okay, so for pure rotation, we can write torque as moment of inertia into angular acceleration. What is the angular acceleration here? Angular acceleration is a rate of a second derivative of the change of the angle phi. Okay, so this we can write as uh, d square phi by dt square. Okay, so this equation I can rewrite as uh, i d square phi by dt square plus taking all the terms to one side. Okay, let's divide through uh, moment of inertia. Go for we get d square phi by dt square plus w l divided by i phi equal to 0. Okay. So this is the equation of motion of the uh, simple pendulum in terms of the angle phi, the polar angle phi. Now, if you compare this with, with the general equation of motion of a simple harmonic motion, the general equation of motion of a simple harmonic motion will be uh, like uh, d square phi by dt square plus omega square phi equal to 0. This is the general equation. In terms of the variable phi. So, this omega is the angular frequency, okay. So, angular frequency omega is equal to square root of W L divided by W is the weight of the bow, uh, L is the length of the string and uh, length of the pendulum and I is the moment of inertia of the bow about the pivot point. Okay, so we have shown that uh, using the language of rotational motion by calculating the torque, we have shown that. Um, so uh, we have shown that the motion of the simple pendulum is simple harmonic and the angular frequency is this much. Okay, let us see, we get uh, the familiar result that we obtained earlier. But the important point now is uh, um, we have used only minimal step to arrive, steps to arrive at this result. So this uh, clearly shows that uh, the easiest way to solve uh, the pendulum motion is using the language of rotational motion. Okay. Okay. Now let us further try to simplify this formula, angular frequency. So this angular frequency omega we can rewrite as W is mg L divided by what is moment of inertia of the bow about the pivot point? Um, the mass of the bob is m and the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation is l. So we can simply write this as um, yeah. So this is equal to m l square. Okay. So we need only the distance from the axis of rotation. Uh, this is the uh, mass point, it's a point particle. So the mass is m and the distance from the axis of rotation is l. Okay. So ml square. So that's uh, m will cancel. Omega is equal to root g by l. This is the same value we have obtained uh, by applying Newton's laws of motion directly. So what is the time period of oscillation of the pendulum? T is equal to 2 pi by omega. So, 2 pi in root of L by G, the familiar equation.
okay so this is how we can solve uh, simple pendulum using the um, language of rotational motion now let us uh, extend our argument to the case of a physical pendulum okay this is a real pendulum in, in a simple pendulum we have uh, uh, assumed that uh, the bob is a point particle and uh, it is attached by a string uh, okay which is weightless but in an actual pendulum uh, the bob is not a point particle it has some dimension and also it is suspended from a pivot by means of a rod okay so um, let's consider a general physical pendulum consider a body of some arbitrary shape okay it can be any shape so uh, let us say it is suspended from this pivot point there is a rod something like this let's call it uh, this pivot point as a okay so uh, this body of an arbitrary shape is suspended from a pivot point uh, by means of a <coughs> rod passing through the pivot point and it is swinging about this pivot point okay let us treat it as a physical pendulum and how do we calculate how do we uh, analyze the dynamics and how do we calculate its time period okay let us assume that um, the center of mass of the the this body is somewhere here at a distance let us say l from the um, pivot point okay uh, then um, so we assume that the entire uh, center of mass is treated as if the entire mass of the body is concentrated at this point uh, so that means once we consider the center of mass let's say the total mass of the this body is m so once we consider this point of center of mass this problem we can translate this problem of the physical pendulum we can translate like this uh, there is a pivot point a here okay this is the vertical and this uh, body of uh, mass w that is mass m that is weight w okay uh, it is swinging uh, swinging uh, about this uh, pivot point so this problem is like a simple pendulum the only thing is that this is not a, a point particle but the center of mass if you consider the center of mass we can treat the center of mass as a point particle we can assume as if the entire um, mass of the body is focused at this point okay the motion of the center of mass we can uh, simulate we can treat it as the motion of a simple pendulum it, the, as if the uh, center of mass is swinging about the uh, pivot point so this problem can be translated this is the effective uh, picture of the, this problem okay so the analysis can follow as in the case of the simple pendulum we can write the same equations so only difference is that now the angular frequency earlier we have written the expression for angular frequency see here angular frequency is uh, here w l by i okay we can write the same expression uh, for angular frequency so here angular frequency is w is the total weight l is the uh, length of the center of mass from the pivot point okay and uh, the distance of the center of mass from the pivot point l divided by i i is the moment of inertia about the pivot point a okay the diff this, this this equation is similar to this earlier equation but the only difference is that now we cannot write i is equal to ml square that's not possible w is mg but i is not equal to ml square because it is not a point particle okay what is ia that depends upon the shape of this body how the mass is distributed about the um, about the pivot point okay but how do we get an expression how do we proceed from here now there is a an expression uh, a simple expression for moment of inertia of a body about the center of mass suppose the moment of inertia about the center of mass is known suppose it is i0 then it can be written as I0 is equal to m k square where the, 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 the variable k is called radius of gyration.
radius of gyration or radius of gyration okay so there is an equation like this okay so moment of inertia of a body about its center of mass you can express in terms of the total mass of the body and a quantity k square where k is radius of gyration so if this is so then we can have a simple expression for the angular frequency uh, you know from parallel axis theorem okay if you invoke uh, parallel axis theorem parallel axis theorem um, look at this um, you have uh, an axis passing through the pivot point okay you imagine a parallel axis passing through the center of mass uh, something like this a parallel axis passing through the center of mass so if you know the moment of inertia this is the uh, moment of inertia about this axis is ia moment of inertia about the parallel axis passing through the center of mass is i0 then according to parallel axis theorem we can write ia is equal to uh, moment of inertia about the axis passing through the pivot point is equal to moment of inertia about the parallel axis passing through the center of mass plus uh, m l square where l is the separation between the two axes okay now okay so the for what is i0 i0 i can write as in terms of radius of gyration i0 i can write as m k square okay plus m l square so i can take m outside k square plus l square now with this we can have a simplified expression for angular frequency now angular frequency of the physical pendulum is square root of what was the general expression w l by i a what is w w is the weight mg l divided by now what is i a i is equal to m into k square plus l square okay so this is equal to square root of g l m will cancel divided by k square plus l square this is the expression for angular frequency of a um, physical pendulum okay and therefore the expression for the time period is which is 2 pi by omega that is 2 pi in the root of k square plus l square divided by gl this is the expression in the case of a simple pendulum uh, we should understand that uh, from this we can get back the expression for simple pendulum for simple pendulum uh, it's not an extended body so the bob is a point particle therefore center of mass is the bob itself okay therefore there is no separation from the uh, center of mass uh, and i mean uh, the moment of inertia is zero moment of inertia of the bob uh, about the center of mass is zero because there is no distance from the center of mass therefore this k is equal to zero for for simple pendulum okay the um, this k radius of gyration is to express moment of inertia about the center of mass in terms of mk square in the case of the bow um, there is moment of inertia simple pendulum there is moment of inertia of the bow about the pivot point is ml square but what is the moment of inertia about itself about the center of mass center of mass is this point itself it's a point particle so moment of inertia about center of mass is zero for the bow uh, so this k is zero okay so if uh, k is zero what do you get k is zero this l square by gl so one l will cancel we get two pi in root of l by g the earlier expression we will get back okay so for physical pendulum um, the only difference is that uh, the expression is the same even though the shape is complicated once we uh, look at the center of mass we can assume that the center of mass is oscillating like a simple pendulum okay like a point particle so we can express the same uh, equation of motion as in the case of simple pendulum we can write and uh, because of this picture of the simple pendulum and uh, this effective picture is the same and angular frequency we can write it down like this but the moment of inertia is not a simple expression like ml square that we can express in terms of radius of variation and uh, distance from the pivot point so finally this is the time period of the um, simple pendulum sorry physical pendulum 2 pi in root of k square plus l square by g the importance of pendulum uh, measurements uh, was that 
between 16th and 20th centuries, uh, the most accurate measurement of acceleration due to gravity were obtained uh, from pendulum experiments. Uh, the time period of uh, um, pendulum can be, like, look at the expression for the time period of a physical pendulum. Uh, it is 2 pi in root of k square plus l square by gl. Uh, square root of k square plus l square by gl and from this equation uh, if you invert this equation you get the expression for acceleration due to gravity here um, we can measure the time period of the pendulum very accurately by counting the time for many swings then um, the only uh, limiting quantity in the accuracy of uh, calculation measurement of acceleration due to gravity is how to determine uh, exactly how to determine accurately the center of mass of the pendulum and also how to uh, accurately determine the radius of gyration okay so these were the limiting quantities uh, so generally acceleration due to gravity uh, was measured by pendulum measurements then um, this problem of uh, exactly determining center of mass and radius of gyration was solved by the, an invention uh, by uh, English physicist Henry Cater and uh, his uh, the pendulum that he developed uh, was called uh, it has been called Cater's pendulum in Cater's pendulum a, it's also a physical pendulum okay it's a special case of a physical pendulum so the, we, we have a physical pendulum of some shape it is suspended from uh, there are two knife edges here uh, A and B. This can be suspended from either knife edge A that means knife edge A can be used as a pivot and it can be suspended from that or knife edge B can be uh, used as a pivot. And here uh, suppose this is the center of mass of the pendulum and the distance of the center of mass from the knife edge A is L A from knife edge B is L B. Okay. Now suppose we uh, swing the pendulum from knife edge A and uh, measure the time period. Okay. Then since this is also a physical pendulum, the expression for the time period will be same as that of a physical pendulum. That is 2 pi root of k square plus um, L square by G L. Okay. So we can uh, use the expression T T A is equal to 2 pi root of k square plus l a square divided by g l right okay g l a so this is when um, a the knife edge a is used as a pivot and the pendulum is uh, swinging from that knife edge now if, uh, if you swing the pendulum from the knife edge b then the time period will be t b is equal to 2 pi root of k square plus l b square by g l b okay now in kts pendulum what is done is this uh, knife edges are movable knife edges okay so the distance uh, l a or l b can be accurately adjusted in such a way that t a is exactly equal to t b okay so we can adjust the, the distances LA or LB such that the two time periods are exactly the same. Now if we equate the time periods, let us equate them. If we equate the two time periods, then uh, the, we can equate the square of the two time periods that is 4 pi square k square plus LA square divided by G times LA is equal to 4 pi square k square plus l b square by g times l b. So this 4 pi square by g will cancel on both sides. And if you cross multiply what you get is um, k square times l b plus l a square times l b is equal to k square times l a plus l b square times l a. If I term, uh, take uh, terms containing k square to the left side k square times lb minus la equals lb square la minus la square lb and suppose on the right side i take la lb as common term then what is remaining is lb minus la 
this lb minus la we can cancel from both sides then we have a simple expression for radius of gyration which is la lb okay now let us substitute the expression in one of the two terms uh, now ta equal to tb we can call it t so time period of kts pendulum is 2 pi root of instead of k square let me substitute la lb plus la square divided by g times la we can cancel an la from numerator and denominator so what is remaining is time period is equal to 2 pi root of so if one la gets cancelled what is remaining is la plus lb divided by g okay so you can notice that in the expression for the time period of kts pendulum uh, k square term radius of gyration is absent so we don't have to worry about radius of gyration now the time period depends only on um, the distance between the two knife edges now it's a we can uh, see invert this equation so the expression for acceleration due to gravity is by squaring uh, both sides and taking g to the left side so what you get is 4 pi square la plus lb divided by t square okay so we can see that acceleration due to gravity depends only on the distance between the two knife edges we don't have to worry about and also the time period okay so we can accurately measure uh, this distance between the two knife edges and also the time period of kts pendulum so kts pendulum provides a very good accuracy in the measurement of acceleration due to gravity uh, this was uh, invented by henry kater uh, in the 19th century okay so this was a very good improvement over a physical pendulum in the uh, in, in the accurate measurement of acceleration due to gravity so today uh, in this class we have discussed um, how to analyze uh, pendulum motion using uh, rotational dynamics first we discussed the simple pendulum using the language of rotational dynamics and we have got the solution very easily uh, the equation for simple harmonic motion can be arrived at very easily and uh, angular frequency general expression is square root of wl by i where w is mg and i is moment of inertia and uh, which uh, reduced to the familiar expression square root of g by l for simple pendulum if you consider a physical pendulum uh, similar expression we can write down now uh, how do we get uh, i moment of inertia about the pivot axis a now this can be obtained from parallel axis theorem and also moment of inertia about the center of mass we can write down in terms of uh, radius of gyration and mass m k square okay so we get an expression time period of the physical pendulum root of k square plus l square by gl and yet another improvement over physical pendulum is kters pendulum so that we don't have to worry about this radius of gyration and uh, center of mass of the body okay uh, we can express uh, time period completely in terms of the uh, distance between the two knife edges la plus lb okay